If you thought the new features in Canva would slow down after all the new updates we got during Canva Create 2025, well, you'd be wrong. Clearly, they're not about to slow down because we just got a major, major update with a new AI video generator joining the Canva AI toolkit, and you can do so much with it. I'm Natalia, and I help you create better content and grow social media, so let's do this. This is a first impressions video, and today I'll show you where you can find this feature, how to use it, and test it with you right here so that you can see the general capabilities. So that's the tutorial portion. I plan on recording another video for this AI video video generation feature with a specific use case in mind for creators and business owners. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell to be the first one to know when these are out. Now, a huge, 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 huge disclaimer right now, before you start generating, you need to know that you have five credits per month as a pro user. This is not a lot, so make sure you really use them well, and we'll talk about it more towards the end. Remember that this is a current limit, and if it ever changes at any point, I'll make sure to pin a comment, as I usually do, with the important update. Now, as a Canva verified expert, I got to access and test out the feature without this limit, so I'll show you what I was capable of creating. Now, this feature is a new AI feature that lets you generate videos with audio and it's based on the Google VO3 model. It's part of the new Canva AI feature so you find it on the homepage by clicking on this button right here or if you go to the left panel you'll see Canva AI in here as well. Now once you click on it you'll open up this box and you'll see design for me, create an image, draft a doc, code for me and now we also have create a video clip right here. Now this opens up the prompt box and also below you see your recent chats and also see what you can do with AI. So you have different suggestions for what you can actually generate. But please, please be careful because these will consume your precious credits. So approach with caution, okay? Now, if you want to start prompting, you can describe your idea from here. So this is where you go for anything that you'd like to generate. However, there are also parameters that you can set for your generation so that the model understands you better. Now, if you click on style in here, you can see that you can choose anything from cinematic through animated all the way to cyberpunk or surreal. I'll go for cinematic for this one. Then you have aspect ratio. For now, we only have horizontal. However, there's a vertical option coming soon, which I'm very excited for. Next, we have duration, which is a standard eight seconds for the VO3 model. However, the custom duration is coming soon as well, which I find very interesting. Then something very, very important is framing. And this is where you can establish what kind of a shot you want. So this helps, again, the model understand what precisely you want from it. So you can go for a wide shot, top down shot, point of view shot, anything like this. You can specify from here. I'll go for a wide shot. And then you have lighting because you want to get the vibe right. So you have soft lighting, hard lighting, golden hour, anything of that nature. I'll go for soft lighting. But please note that you can describe anything you'd like in here. And we'll talk about the prompts in just a second. Now, from here, you can also add media for reference. Or you can go for this microphone icon in here to chat using voice. Because I know a lot of people prefer to just chat into it just to kind of voice prompt um, your your creations from here. So this is your way of describing your ideas using your voice. Now at this stage, I feel like it's important to talk about prompts. There are several approaches to prompt building for video generation, and I'll share two I found the best here. The first one is called Cascade, and it comes from Tian Yu, who is a generative AI educator. I've actually learned about it from the one and only Roni Hermosa from the Team Rondi duo, who very kindly shared it on our Canva Verified Expert group. It follows the structure of C for camera, where you specify the shot type, angle, and style, then A for ambience with lighting and time of day, S for subject, so who or what the character or the object is, then C for context with details about the background or location, A for action and motion, D for dialogue or script, and finally E for emotion. I'll link the original post down below, and please do go ahead and show Tianyu some love. He definitely deserves it for giving us such a helpful guide and as a side note, I always want to highlight stuff that I've learned from other creators, but I feel like so often they don't really get the credit that it deserves. So I'm often kind of hesitant to even share it. That's why I'm saying go look at the actual post, please, and 
I'm back on track now. Here's a detailed prompt I generated using the cascade structure. So let's paste this prompt in here and you can see that I've actually added the subject part and also the world part just because I want these two to repeat across all the different parts of my prompts. So when I'll be prompting for new scenes, I want this to actually kind of guide the model as to the kind of the subject consistency and also the world consistency. So I want to make sure that every time it generates something for me. I'm trying to retain the same elements so that everything is very similar and it's more cohesive. Okay, let's go ahead and submit it now. From here, you're taken into this little box right now. This will, for the time being, kind of confirm that it's generating for you and you can see hang tight, it will take up to two minutes. Sometimes it can even take a little longer depending on what you're generating. At times you may also find a little notification right below this little panel. So without this box appearing, you'll have something saying like Canva AI cannot really help you with generating anything copyrighted or illegal, anything of that sort. Because of course, with Canva AI, you have certain limitations in place to make sure that there's fair and good use of the product. So um, if that appears very usually I found that it retains, pertains to something that is a, a proprietary um, item. So for example, if you ask for something specific, that's like a style of someone who might have a copyrighted item or a very known franchise, for example, this will be preemptively blocked by Canva AI. Now, what I found a little funky is that sometimes you'll get this prompt, but you won't really see um, that there is that the model is not generating because it's still showing you generating your video, right? So when I was first starting to test this feature, it was actually, I was just waiting for it to give me something and I didn't actually see that this part was given to me. So I, I wasn't really, you know, I, I was just waiting for it to generate and it didn't. So this is something for you to keep in mind. Amazing, we have our first generation. Notice that I haven't really specified any of the audio, any dialogue, because I didn't want for this first scene to have any dialogue. So let's click on it and see what it looks like. You can see that if I even hover on top of it, it actually generates the preview. You can also download it to your drive straight from here, or you can just click on it and it will open it up in this panel right here and let's listen. Amazing. It's pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Maybe if I wanted to, I would make it a little less kind of video gamey. Uh, I think it, the inspiration, because the inspiration behind it was World of Warcraft. I don't know if there are any fans in here, but this was kind of my inspiration behind the, the prompt itself. I think Canva AI or VO3 model actually understood it. So it made it a little bit video gamey. I could start prompting it a little bit more to fix certain things, but actually I really like that it actually gave me the two moons. It gave me the big, big tall trees. It gave me the crystals and the, the mist in here. So everything I wanted is pretty much in here. So let's try the second prompt. The second prompt structure comes from an article on replicate.com, which I found helpful in general. It follows like this subject. So who or what is in the scene context or your location, the description of where the subject is action so what your subject is doing style so what vibe you're going for and what style you want the video to be in camera motion so again what camera movements you want like first person pov top down pan etc composition so how the shot is framed like close up or wide shot and ambience so the mood and lighting here's where the prompt for the second shot could look like using the structure okay so i've just pasted the second prompt however i still added the subject and the world description again to return that aesthetic that I um, submitted earlier. So let's click in here and see what Canva generates for us. Okay, we have the second one. Now I can already see that it looks very video gamey and this is definitely not what I was looking for. So I can maybe start prompting to see if it can change. Now it did give me what I asked for in terms of kind of the touching of the plant. However, again, she's running and it's not very consistent to what we had before because before she had kind of uh, the hair was outside and it looked a little bit more realistic. It looked a little bit more sci-fi. However, this one again looks a lot more like 
just a video game, so I'm not a big fan of this. Now I've tried using a little bit more of a natural language. I'm still following kind of the same model, the same structure. So the first part, I actually said what I want and I want it to look cinematic and realistic. I gave it the camera angles and then I specified that the same woman with shoulder length purple hair approaches the plant. Her gloved hand gently touches the tendrils and it curls slightly on contact. And what I'm trying to achieve in here is to limit the data that it gets. Something that I found in here before is that whenever I prompt for something, anything that's kind of towards the end of the prompt seems to be kind of less important to the model. So anything that you want to achieve kind of that has to be there should be towards the front of the prompt. So I'm trying to just kind of uh, condense the whole prompt into something a little smaller so that everything's understood better and hopefully I'll achieve less of a video game look. All right, we have the second one. Let's click on it. Now, I still feel like it looks a little video gamey. But it is much better. Now, there is some funky stuff happening in here. She looks a little bit more similar to what she looked like originally, which I'm happy with. You can see that it kind of reverted to what I was looking for. You can still see the moons behind. So it looks a lot more consistent than with the second one. Okay, let's prompt for the third time. In this case, I'm trying to achieve a bit of an audio from it again, because Google View 3 is actually capable of it. So let's see how it translates. Photosynthetic energy source, possibly semi-sentient. All right, you can see already that we have the subtitles that generated in here. And this is a bit of an issue, which I'll cover in just a moment. Now let's try to remove them, okay? Okay, we have the second one. Let's see, of course, I asked for the video to be intact. Let's see if I actually removed <laughs> the subtitles at least. So not only did it remove the subtitles, it also removed the audio. So that wouldn't be a usable one. And you can see that sometimes it's really tricky to remove them. Let's move on to the next prompt. Let's go ahead for a close up shot. And before I play this one, I actually wanted to pay attention to the fact that I've only generated five videos right now and that would mean that the credits would be up for this month. Luckily, I have the ability to test it even further. So let's see this one. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> okay, it's a little funny. I think it's usable, definitely, but it is a little funny in terms of how she says it. She's very much in awe in the very beginning, and you can see that the character consistency starts to blend a little bit. I still feel like we're retaining this kind of credibility a little bit. However, this one I found quite funny. <laughs> okay, I've generated some more of the clips, so let me show you what else you can do from this panel. So again, for any of the videos, you can always go back, go to the front, preview them to the right of it if you want to see it. If you hover over a clip, you will see a little preview of it too. In the top right corner of every single video, you can go ahead and download it to your drive. You can also download them from here, but I'm going to go ahead and for my last one, I'm going to go ahead and use it in the Canva editor. Now, as you can see, what happens is that it takes you into a video file and then you'll see the last clip that you've chosen to be included in the, um, in the video editor. But don't worry, everything you've ever generated in terms of the videos, if you go to your uploads and click on videos, you'll see all of your clips in here. So this is how we can start building your video from the Canva editor very easily and choose the ones that you find the best. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to edit videos because you can go ahead and watch this video in here. However, you can just simply kind of drag and drop certain things into your um, timeline just like this. I'm just going to add a clip and then you can just put them all together like this to create a cohesive um, movie almost. Of course, like with anything else, you can go to the elements tab at any of the elements, animate them. You could very easily go to text and add captions as well because the captions can 
can apply to anything you generate in here as long as it has voice and it, this one has audio. Of course, for this one, it did add a little bit of that very weird uh, caption. So by all means, feel free to just kind of crop it ever so slightly like this. This is kind of the cinematic style one and I can just use something a little bit more like this for my video in here. So you can see that it just fixed it a little bit. Then if you go to, again, to elements, you can scroll down to audio. And from here, you will be able to find music maybe for your video, just to kind of generate that vibe a little bit more. So you can find something that maybe fits the vibe of your video as well. And you can just drag and drop it onto the audio track in here. So this is pretty cool. And the fact that we can generate so much with it is really amazing. Things that seem to do well with the Google VO3 model are vlog style clips. This is a great way to test the capabilities in a creative way and have some pretty good results consistently. Responds well to any descriptions of lighting, ambience, etc., which I found really great. What doesn't work is clocks and watches. AI models in general have issues with it and anything that's kind of rhythmic seems to be an Issue. I've also had some issues with dialogues between more than one character. The model seems to get a little lost with these, so you have to be super careful about describing the person who says the line in the prompt well. For example, even if you have a man and a woman, which generally would be enough of a descriptor for the models, I've found that sometimes the model doesn't really distinguish between the two characters. So any descriptors you've used for the person, try to repeat in the further bit of the prompt pertaining to the dialogue. And speaking of dialogue, of course, there's also a bit of a problem with subtitles. For some reason, VO3 wants to randomly add subtitles to our clips, and more often than not, that's just not very accurate. You can try to get rid of them by prompting further and asking to remove subtitles or to not add them, but it's pretty hit or miss. Some advice I've seen online is to not use quotation marks when adding bits of dialogue, and it does seem to help, but not always. Sometimes you will just have to resort to cropping things out in Canva later on. And let's also address the elephant in the room and chat about the limitations. First and foremost, the limitation of eight seconds from Google VO3 is pretty restrictive. Eight seconds is not enough really to have much said, although it absolutely is enough for some use cases, specifically if you're pulling together a montage of vlog clips, B-roll, teaser trailer stuff, music videos, and so many other things. So I guess it really depends on what you're looking for. That being said, if you pair it with five credits per month only, that doesn't really give you a lot, especially that you have to prompt a few times to get to a good result. Given that so many of us, myself included, have to figure out how the model works or rather how to work with it effectively. This is a massive, massive limitation in my opinion, which makes a feature not very usable at the moment. And that shouldn't be a surprise, even if you're super good at prompting and happen to ask for the things that the model delivers well on, we're still getting five eight second clips only. And that's hardly enough for the majority of use cases. So at this stage, I'm treating it as a really cool novelty. And I'm very happy that it got integrated with massive, massive hopes that we're going to get more credits on a monthly basis. If we do, however, get more access to credits, well, I can tell you from my experience, it's extremely fun to use this feature and get some amazing footage through trial and error. It really stirred my imagination in ways that I didn't really expect and I could bring things to life that I've been thinking about for a long, long time. Make sure to watch this video right now to see all the most useful new Canva updates that were announced at Canva Create this year. And let me know what you think about this new video AI generation feature in Canva. I want to know your opinions, tell me if you tested it. And of course, subscribe, like, I'll be back with more content very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.